Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be doing my actual review for the Justice League film, so i just seen it in cinemas, and I'm going to watch it over and over again, because it was a super enjoyable movie, I loved every second of it. So, guys, I'm doing a Justice League Wonder Woman Funko Pop giveaway, so if you go to the link in the description, it will follow you to my Twitter page, all you need to do is retweet that and follow me on Twitter, and post hashtag Justice League DCTV, and you'll be entered into the competition to win that special Justice League Wonder Woman Pop. So also I will be posting my full breakdown of the Justice League film and all the easter eggs that I've spotted So I'm pretty sure I've got like maybe 95% of the easter eggs pinned down And I'm going to be going back and seeing it obviously again And I'll post those in the next few days and also the post credit scenes There's two of them I will definitely be breaking them down And I will have some extra Justice League videos with extra theories around stuff that was set up in the film So you guys are going to get a lot of Justice League stuff in the next coming days because that film was absolutely awesome and I've got so much to say about it so if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed already can you please subscribe because you're not going to want to miss out on all this Justice League stuff especially the easter egg videos and the post credit scene video so let's get into the review for the Justice League film so it was just released today in the UK I didn't actually get to go see it early and it was such a great audience like I was in a pretty small cinema and basically everyone clapped after the film and that's the atmosphere that it was like it was just so cool Basically the Justice League I have to stress this it's all about setting up the league and you know There is going to be some spoilers in this so if you don't want to be spoiled, you know go away But it's not going to be like a full heavy spoiler I'm really gonna save that for my Easter egg video It's going to be just small hints of spoilers not too much and so yeah It's all about setting up the league It isn't about you know this full-on just put them all together and they're going to automatically be a working well machine And no, it isn't that and it is setting up the league you know, creating the ideas of the threats that come with like the post credit scenes, the dark side name drop, like that was awesome. I absolutely freaked out when I heard Steppenwolf say dark side and my mind was blown and I was just out. I literally phased out at one point in one scene. I was in shock, but I will save that for my Easter egg video because I was going crazy when this happened and I'm not going to mention it in this video because it's major spoilers. And basically the rest of the film was about them all coming together, forming the six of them into the Justice League and at the end when they actually go to Bruce's old mansion so his family mansion they say we're gonna make a round table and we're gonna have spaces for six people that's obviously the six members in this Justice League film so obviously including Superman and he says and room for more so like I said before it's setting up the idea of the league actually expanding becoming this well working oiled machine so the space for more thing really teases the idea of like Green Lantern you know all these other heroes actually coming into the Justice League so we can expect more heroes during Justice League 2 so I can't wait for that film and in between that all these solo films are going to be setting up these characters giving them proper backstories as obviously Justice League was quite short and I will talk more about the length later in this video. So if you're a massive DC Comics fan, you're going to adore this film. I guarantee you that. And if you're a casual viewer, you will have tons of fun. You will know who Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, you will know who all of those are. You won't know probably who the villain is, Steppenwolf, and you probably won't know about, you know, some of the smaller characters like Cyborg, but, you know, you're going to really enjoy it if you're just a casual fan. But like I said, if you're a DC Comics fan, you're going to love this movie. It has so many Easter eggs. It has so many hints dropped everywhere about, you know, the DCEU and how it's going to go forward with, like, the Flash dropping the Speed Force reference and massive things happen. I'm going to say most of the massive things for my Easter egg video. So it was a very well-made movie and I have to give Zack Snyder some credit for this because he did do an amazing job and I have to say I really love the beautiful colours so Zack Snyder's visuals were very good in this film and, you know, I've been sceptical about him in the past just due to some of his films aren't that good and I don't see him as an extraordinary extraordinary director and in this film I felt like this is probably one of his best films and this film was just really fun really well made and you know it combined a load of stuff that I just loved and it was like the perfect film for me like myself I don't know you guys have to see it like go watch it like three times or more in the cinema and then buy it on DVD when it comes out because you guys are gonna love this film if you haven't seen it yet and so the cinematography in the film was very good it was very consistent throughout the whole film and probably my biggest complaint is the CGI but 
you know, we have that in every superhero film, so it's not like they can say, oh, Justice League was shit because of the CGI. You can't say that because, say you look at other superhero films, say you look at Civil War, you see the airport fight scene, that is really badly CGI'd. And there's so many other superhero films that all have this really, really poor CGI. And I felt like overall the CGI was good. It wasn't perfect, you know, there were some shots where it was really good, where they actually combined the CGI with the real characters. They were the best CGI shots because, you know, they were able to intertwine it. But some scenes where there was just pure CGI, it was a bit iffy. And yeah, so that's probably my biggest query, but you know, that happens in every superhero film, so that's always going to be a complaint. And probably one of my favourite things, apart from the characters, was definitely the storyline, because the storyline was really enticing, you know, with Steppenwolf actually coming to Earth and him actually doing it in the past, I thought the flashback scene was probably one of my favourite scenes, because that was a scene where I just went crazy, you know, and I'm going to talk more about the flashback scene in my easter eggs video, because I was like, losing it, I literally lost my shit, and I actually genuinely screamed in the cinema, so tell me in the comments below if you actually screamed, or you like cried at the flashback scene especially, or perhaps in some other scenes, you know, some big scenes in the actual film, and so yeah, the enticing storyline was really good, and you know, they were trying to terraform the earth, turn it into apocalypse by using the three mother boxes, combining them to make unity, and unity was what Steppenwolf wanted, and he thought it was his birthright to actually, you know, claim the earth, because in the past he actually was taken away from Earth and he was exiled from Apocalypse as he failed to actually conquer Earth. So the Parademons were great, I thought they were nice little minions and you know this whole film is just setting up the idea that these Parademons are coming back, all this massive army is. You know Steppenwolf was hard but remember the future is massive and yeah so the easter eggs and hints for other future DC stuff was absolutely brilliant and that was one of my favourite things of how many hints and easter eggs they actually dropped so that's why I'm making a set separate easter egg video because there's so much to go over and I actually went crazy with writing all my notes and I was like oh my god there's so many easter eggs. It set up loads of major new characters for the DCEU, you know, sparking the interest for all of it and like I said, especially in the flashback scene, you know, there was a dark side name drop, there was the new gods name drops, but I'm going to be talking about all of those easter eggs that I spotted actually in that video, so please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that probably tomorrow. So this actually sets up, like I said before, ideas for Justice League 2, because we're supposing the dark side name drop is a direct reference to actually Justice League 2, which is going to be coming out probably about 2019, 2020, sometime around there, and I just can't wait for that. So the solo films in between will set up the characters, bring new characters in, and hopefully we get a Green Lantern by the time of that film. One of my other complaints was that I felt like they cut out a lot of scenes, and you know, that was a big problem with like a lot of superhero films because they do shoot for a long time. And like Batman vs Superman, the extended cut was a lot better than the actual normal theatrical cut. And I felt like the two hour time mark was good, but I felt like it was a tiny bit too short. I would say about 2 hours and 20 minutes would have been the optimum amount. I would have hoped for a bit longer than that, to be honest. At no point in this film was I not enticed, was I not super excited about what was going on, you know, the storylines, the characters, because they were all really intriguing. And I feel like all of you guys will actually agree to on that point, that, you know, the characters and the actual storyline was actually so interesting, and you could watch it for hours on end. And... So I felt like it had to be a bit longer, so hopefully when they actually release it on DVD, they release a longer version, I think that would be pretty cool, because I do feel like they cut out some scenes. So, moving on to the characters, and this is probably going to be my last section of the review, because most of the other stuff I want to talk about is the big spoilers and the big easter eggs, so that's the post credit scenes and just the easter eggs of the overall film. So the characters, Wonder Woman was definitely my favourite character in the film, she was badass like normal and we got a lot of references back to the Wonder Woman film which is personally one of my favourite superhero films along with The Dark Knight and I felt like it's always good that we've actually got Christopher Nolan actually executive producing these DCEU films and he's actually executive produced this film and I feel like his influence is very good you know he doesn't let them go full on Marvel and just like you know just spam a load of jokes in there and I feel like that's where Marvel go wrong 
with their jokiness. They're becoming more of a comedy franchise than an actual superhero franchise, in my opinion. I feel like Wonder Woman was definitely the best character, you know, she was really developed, and I think the main reason for that was because she had an origin story film. We actually feel for her, we know her backstory, we know what she's been through, and we actually are super intrigued and super invested in her storyline. And I feel like by the time of Justice League 2, when we have the Flash movie, when we have the Batman movie, when we have the Aquaman movie, you know, all these different films for the characters that are going to appear in the big team up film are going to be so much better so I feel like Wonder Woman definitely had an advantage going into this film and I felt like Gal Gadot did an awesome job and the writing around her character was great so moving on to Batman he was a big improvement I personally really liked Batman vs Superman it's not my favorite superhero film but I enjoyed the storyline you know that gave us a lot of hints for what to expect in the future with like the parademons and you know Steppenwolf and stuff like that but I felt like his character was a lot better and it suited the Justice League film a lot more than it actually suited the Batman in Batman vs Superman and I thought his new suits and his new toys were really cool I really liked his tactical suit he was badass in that I just want to say one complaint I wish we went to Apocalypse but I know that's probably going to be in Justice League 2 because obviously we're going to be facing Darkseid and I really do hope we go to Apocalypse so that's my probably one of my only complaints but I know it would be really expensive to imitate our whole world and then also you know we would have to be introduced to Darkseid so I think they're saving that for Justice League 2. Moving on to The Flash, he was very funny and he was pretty hilarious. Uh, all the audience in the cinema actually cracked up a load of times to him and he was very funny. You know, he felt like Barry Allen and, you know, I was sort of getting used to him within this film and he mixes the tones up a lot and he seems to be very relatable to the fans and probably my only query is, you know, his suit and maybe I felt like some scenes were kind of forced a bit, you know, some of the humour. I felt like every scene he was in there was humour and I I feel like in the Flash film he should dole that down and there were some awesome reverse Flash easter eggs and we're going to be talking about that in depth in another video probably in my easter egg video so we'll talk all about Henry Allen and stuff so Aquaman was totally badass Jason Momoa did an awesome job and we got to explore his powers and once again I felt like he should have had his Aquaman film for the Justice League film because we were sort of plunged into the film with him and I felt like he was an awesome character but I felt like they should have actually actually, you know, developed his backstory a bit more before they totally put him in the actual team. But apart from that, he was an awesome character and I'm totally excited for the Aquaman film coming next year. And Cyborg had probably the most build-up in this actual film, but you know, we have more build-up because Wonder Woman had her actual own film. So I felt like Wonder Woman was still more developed than Cyborg, even though in this film, Cyborg had probably one of the most relevant and also Superman obviously so he had a good build up and he still has potential for exploration but I'm not sure about a cyborg film I just don't think that would totally work because you know he's probably my least favorite member in the Justice League and I felt like his storyline was really good and we got to feel for him but in the comics I'm just not a massive cyborg fan but he actually was very good in this actual film so Superman obviously this is massive spoilers so skip now if you don't want to see this but I'm gonna talk briefly about him so it's awesome to have him back he did some great Batman vs Superman references when he came back, you know. Tell me, do you bleed? And then Bruce after that says, yep, I'm pretty sure I'm bleeding. So that was jokes. I actually really loved the Batman vs Superman jokes, you know, taking the mick out of it, how, you know, the conflict was kind of a bit silly that these guys are now going to be in the Justice League together. And yeah, so it's awesome to have him back. Henry Cavill did an awesome job. You know, at the start, it was all about Superman's death, that how the world needs Superman, and he truly does. And the way he came back was pretty awesome. Even though I do feel like my only query as to Superman was that they kind of plunged him right in, like I said about some of the other characters, you know, with them just being plunged in pretty fast for Aquaman, especially. It felt like we didn't actually know Aquaman too much before this, and he just got, you know, shoved in. And Superman, it was great to have him back, but you know, I felt like the pacing of his introduction was a bit all over the place but apart from that Superman was awesome great having him back I'm super excited hopefully we get a Man of Steel 2 film soon 
with some awesome new villains. So Steppenwolf, the villain, was a good villain. You know, his storyline was awesome. I really liked his actual reasonings and it was a great setup for future bigger threats. So Steppenwolf in some iterations is the nephew of Darkseid or he's like a lieutenant in Darkseid's army. So basically Darkseid is like 50 times or maybe 100 times more strong than him. So, so the Justice League actually really struggled getting rid of Steppenwolf so it just sets up the idea of how strong Darkseid's going to be with the Darkseid name drop in this actual film. We can expect him to go apeshit. So I felt like the CGI was the only probably bad thing about Steppenwolf and I felt like they should have just done face prosthetics instead of CGIing his face and obviously they had to make him really tall and you know extend him make him really bulky but I felt like his face should have at least been you know him actually talking because they did struggle with the mouth actually sinking in and you know that was probably the only bad thing about him and I felt like they should have done less CGI on his actual character and used proper prosthetics. So that's my Justice League review guys. I'm going to be having my easter egg video and my post credit scene video out pretty soon. Should be tomorrow, maybe later today, we'll see. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. This was an awesome film. Guys, you gotta go watch it a load of times. I'm gonna go watch it again very soon. So anyway guys, I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. Strong, it doesn't make us weak. Tongue tied to service like shark free.